Urquhart Castle is a very historical place in the highlands of Scotland. And even though the ruins of Urquhart Castle are super important to the history of Scotland, it's not Urquhart Castle that typically draws people to this area. Instead, it's the lake or the loch that Urquhart sits upon. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button and give us a like. I also want to give a special thank you to all of our patrons and our producers. If you want to help the channel out, we have a link down below in the description box. As always, I want to give a special shout out to Tiffany Monroe, one of our producers here. I hope you guys enjoyed her video on Saturday. Again, if you would like to get in touch with Tiffany, her email address is listed down below. All right, let's get started. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce, and today on our Mystery Monday, we are gonna be talking about one of the most requested mysteries I've received, the mystery of the Loch Ness Monster. Really happy to be doing this story because we have so many friends on this channel in our esoteric Atlanta community that are from Scotland for those of you who are from Scotland watching I hope I get this right I'm not gonna try to do a Scottish accent because that would just be embarrassing but I would also love for you to add any information about this legend or this mystery down in the comments below especially if you're from the area I would love to hear if you have any encounters or have heard any stories that I have not. I'm also super excited that a lot of you guys want us to start doing some lives. There's a couple of cults that are brewing in our world today, revolving some celebrities as the people who started these cults. And I would really love to do a live and go through all that information with you guys instead of doing it like a story like I do with the older information. Now, with that being said, you're going to have to be really patient. I'm going to sit down and go over it this week and try to figure out how to actually do a live. I want to figure out how to screen share as well so I can pull up some websites and we can look at this stuff together and you guys can give me your opinions and your input too because cults to me are really, really fascinating. Okay, let's talk about this monster. So the Loch Ness is, again, it's a lake locks in Scotland that's located in the Scottish Highlands. Now the two biggest cities in Scotland are Edinburgh and Glasgow. I have been to Glasgow and they are the kind of there below that is the Scottish Lowlands. Now I've been there. I have not been to the Scottish Highlands though, which I could kick myself that when I lived in the UK, I didn't take the opportunity to go to the Scottish Highlands, not just to see Loch Ness, but to see all the beauty of the Scottish Highlands. And to give you guys a little bit of a foreshadowing, we're going to do a few stories revolving Scotland. Of course, what better way to start off than to talk about the Loch Ness Monster or Nessie as this monster has been named. Now, the Loch Ness is a pretty big loch. It's about 24 miles long and one mile wide. It's a lot bigger than I thought the Loch Ness was in, in my head. Now in doing research for the Loch Ness, one of the most interesting things that I learned is that the Loch Ness is not a new phenomenon. This is not something that just popped around in the last 100 years. In fact, the first recorded incident involving Nessie happened 1,500 years ago, which begs one of my questions. If the Loch Ness is real, if there really is something in this lake or this loch, is it the same monster that's just never died? Or is it a family of little Loch Ness monsters? And this is just multiple generations popping up? Like what's really going on? So in 565 AD, St. Columba 
wrote about the Loch Ness Monster. In his writing, he referred to the Loch Ness Monster as a water beast. Now, St. Columba was a man who was from Ireland. He was a priest and he was a scholar. Now, the story goes that St. Columba had traveled down to Rome, Italy to do some studying, and then he came back to Ireland and there was some dispute over him copying the Gospels. Like, they didn't want him to, like, hand copy the Gospels gospels because obviously there was no copying machines or you know computers at that time so everything had to be copied by hand and apparently like where he was they just did not want him doing that but he wanted to do that so that he could spread the word of these gospels which makes sense to me but you know 1500 years ago was a very different time in our history and for some reason the powers that be didn't want him doing that but St. Columba was on this mission to convert all these people to Christ. And I can respect him for wanting to copy the Gospels. I mean, that's a pretty honorable thing to do. So you're like basically telling the people you're trying to convert, like, don't take my word for it. Why don't you look at this for yourself? But then again, I don't know how many people at that time were actually literate. Someone can answer me down in the comments below if the average person could have read the Gospels, and I'm assuming at that point they were mostly in Latin anyway. So basically there's just a bunch of drama between St. Columba and his authoritative powers that be, and they kind of go into this battle and St. Columbus wins, but because St. Columba, I guess, is a bit of a martyr himself, he decides because he won and, and in winning, some people had to die in the battle that he's going to exile himself over to the neighboring land of Scotland human beings are just really dramatic like we've always been super dramatic haven't we anyway so saint columba sets up a monastery on the isle of iona and apparently this is still a monastery that you can go and visit to this very day i am gonna put that on my list of things to visit in scotland next time i'm there so after all the drama is done with St. Columba and his Irish contemporaries and he's exiled himself to Scotland, he decides he's now going to go about the Scottish Highlands and convert all the heathens. And in doing so, he travels to the area of the Loch Ness. When he passed the Loch Ness, he saw a group of people battling to get this man out of a, the water who was being attacked by some mystical beast. Like from what I understand, Columba saw this mystical beef beast along with all the people on the water's edge. And once they were able to pull the man to safety, St. Columba apparently, allegedly, gave a prayer to the beast or cursed the beast. He was just like, be gone, ye beast. And the beast went back down into the water, something like that. Well, it goes, does go to say that we didn't hear about this beast for another 1500 years. So maybe Columbus curse or prayer or whatever it was worked, or maybe we just don't have recorded references to other people who experienced the Loch Ness in between 565 AD and the late 1800s when he started to appear again. Or maybe it's a she. It is written that a man named Dee McKenzie did see the Loch Ness in 1870 although his story wouldn't be shared until the 1930s. Because in the 1930s, that's when Nessie took front and center stage. Because you see, in March of 1933, a young couple from London were driving around the lock where they saw what appeared to be a monster swimming in the water. Now, their accounts of seeing Nessie caused quite a stir in the media. All of a sudden now, many people, this is modern history, many people are coming up to Lake Ness to try to find this monster. And of course, in 1934, probably the most famous photo of Nessie was taken by a surgeon. Now, of course, many people believe that this photo was a hoax, while others are not so sure. Of course, we know that there have been many faked pictures, but of course, for as many faked pictures, there are still pictures that seem pretty real and pretty mysterious. 
And in fact, by 1962, things got so crazy around Loch Ness that they created the Loch Ness Investigation Bureau. Now, this Loch Ness Investigation Bureau only lasted for 10 years, closing in 1972. And in 1987, they had Operation Deep Scan. Now this to me is super fascinating because basically at this point, they were able to take sonars and just kind of scour the whole of the lake to see if they could find particular shapes that weren't natural to the lake. And they do have some evidence of something big being underneath the water. Now, I do believe that there is something in Loch Ness, even though I've never seen it for myself. As I said earlier, I've never been to Loch Ness. But the thing is, in doing research for this story, I watched a lot of people give their testimony over experiencing Nessie. And I'm telling you guys, when somebody's experienced something that phenomenal, they tell, they retell their story with a bit of PTSD. And I believe every person who's claimed to have an experience. And for a lot of these people who have had experiences, they've made it their life's mission to figure out what the hell is in Lake Loch Ness. You wouldn't waste your life trying to find something if you were just trying to create a hoax or fool people. Now, there are some people that believe Nessie is left over from the dinosaur age, which could be a possibility. There are also people that believe Nessie is an eel, an overgrown eel. As I said earlier, one of my questions is, is Nessie the same Nessie that St. Columbus saw? Or is there multiple Nessies? Is there a family of Nessies? When everybody has an experience with the Loch Ness, are they seeing the same Loch Ness monster or are they seeing a different member of the Loch Ness community? I also have suspicions that there might be tunnels under Loch Ness. I also think there might be a portal under Loch Ness as well. And if that is true, if there is a portal, then that would explain why we go so long without hearing from Loch Ness and all of a sudden, boom, there he is again. So what do you guys think? What's your opinion on our fair Nessie? Have you been there? Have you experienced the Loch Ness monster? Now I do know, I am aware that there are other phenomenons in other areas of the world regarding monsters in a lake. And even though we didn't touch on those monsters in this story, who knows, maybe we'll talk about them later on in another story. Regarding the tunnels, I do know that there are people who believe that the Loch Ness and the Loch Ness's community are able to travel through underground tunnels to different lakes around the world. I know that seems wild, but I do know that is a theory out there. So what are your thoughts on that? All right, guys, thank you so much again for sitting through another story. Tomorrow, I'll be back on David's channel the dark outpost to talk about the war scroll or one of the scrolls written in the Dead Sea Scrolls that talks about the battle of the sons of light against the sons of darkness. Of course, this is pretty apocalyptic. Depending on how it goes, I might film a recap for you guys for Wednesday or Wednesday we might just continue with our Scottish theme. We shall see how it goes. Um, otherwise, if I do do a retailing of the War Scroll on Wednesday, we'll continue back with our Scottish theme on Friday. The next story I have for you guys coming out of Scotland is pretty sensational. It's pretty juicy and I'm super excited to talk about it. So stay tuned and I will talk to all of you guys soon. Again, if you would like to purchase our opening song, there is a link below. And if you want to follow Todd Roderick's band, Todd, thank you so much for helping me get this video out here. Again, follow the link below. All right, guys, I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.